Hello Grade 12s and also greetings to your mom and dad and your guardian and whoever is with you at home. Thank you very much that you've applied to study engineering at Stellenbosch University. We are very happy uh, and we look forward to welcome you in 2022. My name is August Engelbrecht and I'm in the Dean's Office of Engineering and part of my task is to integrate our first years to help you, to support you in your first year. So I'm personally looking forward to also welcome you uh, in 2022. So, as I said, congratulations. You've been one of our students that are earmarked to start your engineering career at Stellenbosch University. And so what can you look forward to in this program? Well, we would like to give you just a small sneak, sneak peek, as they say in Afrikaans, a full smaky for what you can expect in your first year. Of course, you will meet the Dean, uh, Professor Vikas van Niekerk. You will meet our Vice Dean. You will meet uh, one of our lecturers that are doing top class research. And uh, we, you will meet one of our lecturers that have a very difficult background when he grew up and how he eventually traveled the world. Uh, he will tell you about the rewards of being an engineer. And then last but not least, you will hear from one of our first year students and she will tell you what she have experienced thus far at the Faculty of Engineering at Stellenbosch University. You will also understand why she made the choice to study at Stellenbosch University. So without further ado, let me introduce you to our Dean. He is Professor Vikas van Niekerk. Thank you, August. Goeienaand, Molweni, good evening. Dit is inderdaad een voorrecht om u op hierdie online platform te ontmoet hier uit Stellenbosch uit. We are talking to you from Stellenbosch, from the Faculty of Engineering, and as you've heard, um, Vikas van Nikker, currently the Dean of Engineering. Why do you, or why should you consider studying engineering? Engineers are people that solve real world problems. We design, we develop, we test, we manufacture, and we build systems to support economic development, as well as to improve the quality of life for all the citizens of South Africa. We play a role in saving lives, and a good example of that is healthcare, how we have made tremendous progress over the last three decades, devising different systems and mechanisms that um, can be used by medical doctors and specialists to improve your health and also to extend your health. We play a major role in developing the economy by adding value and creating job opportunities. Engineering is central to meet some of the major challenges of the future. You are all aware of some of them. One is climate change. We have to deal with our CO2 emissions and stabilize a very, very bad trajectory of how we are influencing the environment and making it more difficult for the natural system to survive. One of the areas that we can contribute is clean energy. And this is especially where, el where electrical and mechanical engineers play a major role. We also need to provide clean water. Water is becoming a very constrained resource in the world, especially in a country like South Africa. And then, of course, the big threat of cybersecurity. We all have data out there, we all have devices, and we need to secure ourselves from all these criminals who have found a whole new environment in which to operate. There is a significant demand for engineers all over the world. If you compare the different numbers, for instance, in the developed countries, typically you will have nine, engineers per a thousand working people in Japan, eight in the US and four in the European Union. In other countries, which you can compare to the economies or the scale of the economy in South Africa, like South Korea and Australia, you see the numbers as 2.77 and 4.8. However, in South Africa, we're sitting at less than half a person or half an engineer per 1,000 working people. 
And that is significantly less than the rest of the developing and the developed world. Of course, in the rest of Africa, unfortunately, this number is even less. There's a huge demand for South Africa in the future. If you look at the spending from the government in excess of 200 billion rand on infrastructure projects over the next two, five to ten years, these projects are primarily executed by engineers, not only civil engineers, also mechanical, electrical and industrial and chemical engineers. And to effectively spend that large amount of money, we need engineers to get involved. And of course, that will lead to increased um, job opportunities. In our faculty, we have a different number of engineering degree programs. We have chemical engineers, civil engineering, electrical and electronic engineering, and inside that degree program, we have a specialization in data engineering. We also have a program in industrial engineering, mechanical engineering, and megatronic engineering. At Stellenbosch University, if you are allowed in for one of these programs, then you are free to move to one of the other programs at the end of your first year provided you have met certain conditions. And one of them is that you have to pass all the modules of the program. So this common first year is valid for all our programs, except for the specialist stream in data engineering. There, the students will take at least one module in the first and the second semester, which are different from the common first year. And therefore, it is still possible for them to switch over. However, it will take at least one year longer for them to graduate. All our engineering programs at Stellenbosch are accredited by EXA. EXA stands for the Engineering Council of South Africa. It is our professional body. Every five years they visit our campus, they look at our programs, they look at the material, they have um, conversations with our staff as well as our students, and then they decide whether our programs adhere to the strict international standards that we're supposed to. If our programs are accredited by EXA, then that degree that you get from Stellenbosch is also recognized as the appropriate academic qualification in a number of other countries, including the USA, the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, New Zealand, and so forth. The notable countries that's not there is typically France and German, Germany because they have a different way of teaching their, their engineers and their engineering training is actually a little bit longer than what we have um, in the South African environment. We really want our students to be successful. Therefore, in the first year, there's a lot of additional support that the faculty provides for our incoming first year students. Every week I meet with the whole first year group and we have different discussions where I provide some advice, I, I provide some support, and I also listen to inputs they may have. In addition to that, we have group learning sessions with specialized teaching assistants that meet with these students in the afternoons um, to assist them to work through problems of the different modules. We really try to establish a study buddy system or a, a study group system where students can get to know each other in the first year and then hopefully support each other throughout their four or five years of study at Stellenbosch University. There are also extra lectures in some of the modules, typically over lunchtime, to further um, make sure that there's enough learning opportunities for our first year students. We also have two support staff members in the dean's office that is especially there for our first year students. The students can always contact them and they will direct them to the, the available resources without the university. They might also make appointments for them with our two educational psychologists or with myself or the vice dean if it is required that we get involved. Um, it's very important that you encourage yourselves and your, your, your learners when they join us 
to make use of this additional support in order to be successful first year students. So what would be the reward? Firstly, I have to admit that engineering is a tough course to study. It will require many hours, both during the formal lectures, tutorial and practical sessions, but especially in the evenings and over weekends to prepare yourself for the different assessments that we've put in place to be a successful student. So hard work is important. However, hard work is also a skill that one acquires at university that is highly valued in industry. So it's a good thing to work hard. You will walk out of Stellenbosch with a quality degree that is recognized worldwide. We have many anecdotal ex examples where our students have been accepted to the best universities in the world for postgraduate studies. We will teach you how to think, to think like an engineer. This whole ability to solve technical problems. And that also means that a lot of engineers don't end up working in engineering companies or manufacturing companies. They even work at banks and also at consulting companies. We do believe that the degree at Stellenbosch opens up a host of employment opportunities after you have graduated and you are always a a top candidate when you apply for positions at different companies. So we look forward to welcome you as an engineering student in 2022 at Stellenbosch. In for the Afrikaans sprekendes wil ek net bevestig dat ons het a baie buigsame en praktiese taalbeleid en ons in die fakulteit van ingenieurswese het bitter min indien enige probleme rondom die taal. Ons studente word geaccommodeer, hulle studeer in Afrikaans, hulle skryf hulle examens en hulle toetse in Afrikaans, hulle kan tot hulle finale jaar projectverslag steeds in Afrikaans skryf as dit vir hulle belangrik is. We really look forward to receive you. We are preparing a academic year which we think will be exciting. We trust that we will be very much back to normal in 2022. Um, and we will be able to provide you with a quality education at Stellenbosch University. I now hand you over to our Vice Dean Teaching, Professor Celeste Pelyun, to give you a glimpse of what you can expect in the first year. Celeste. Welcome also from my side. Welcome as a student to Stellenbosch University and to the Faculty of Engineering in particular. We are looking forward to meeting you here next year. And you can look forward to embarking on a training path where you will be well supported and with excellent job prospects and fulfilling careers ahead of you. This stunning campus is filled with thought leaders of tomorrow and your ideas and worldviews can be enriched by perspectives from our diverse student community. Most importantly, here you will grow prepared to contribute to the development of our beautiful country and for a career in a globally connected world, a career that might take you anywhere. The world, and especially our country, are in dire need of engineers. Engineers are creative, technical problem solvers with their feet planted firmly in the real world. They do everything from robotics, data analysis, technical design, to financial modeling, community interaction and project management. So you can imagine there's a place for every personality type in this career. I want to reassure you that at Stellenbosch University, you will receive a world-class education. Having visited many top tier first world universities, we confidently say that the Stellenbosch engineering graduate can stand proudly on equal footing with them. This is true for a number of reasons. <clears throat> Our academic staff, they are technically excellent, but not only that, they are dedicated, willing to go the extra mile, thorough. They care, we care. We see teaching as a calling, a contribution to enable the development of our country and its people. 
As evidence, I can cite the fact that most of our lecturers receive student feedback ratings in excess of 75%, which points to a high level of satisfaction from our students with the quality and teaching practices. Many of our graduates also keep connected and once in industry, consult and collaborate with us on real world problems. Our curriculums are continuously renewed with a forward-looking perspective to prepare you to be the problem solvers of tomorrow. To this end, our academics collaborate extensively, internationally and with local industry. The curriculum starts with a common first year. This means it's relatively easy for you to change direction to another BEng program at the end of your first year. The languages of tuition are English and Afrikaans. In the large first and second year classes, we offer parallel medium. In the smaller program specific modules in the later years, we offer classes in English with, in with Afrikaans support that can include interpreting to Afrikaans or Afrikaans summaries of threshold concepts, as well as tutors that can answer questions in Afrikaans. Exam papers are set in English and Afrikaans, and you can always answer in either language of your choice. Our facilities are exceptionally good, even by first world standards. By this, I mean our laboratories, lecture halls, technology and supporting campus facilities like libraries, accommodation and sports facilities. Because of the high quality, relevant training that we consistently deliver, our degrees are EXA accredited. This means that under the Washington Accord, your degree will be recognized worldwide, including in the USA, Canada, the UK, Hong Kong, Malaysia, Australia, New Zealand, Russia, Japan and more. We also offer support services to help you succeed, like the onboarding program, educational psychologists, group tutors, academic planning support, and many campus-wide support services. As a result, we have a high throughput rate, among the highest in the country, which means that you are likely to succeed at getting your degree. When you graduate from this faculty in a few years, you will be useful, sought after, a problem solver, and therefore a force for good in this world. Training implies effort from your side, so we do not promise that it will be easy. But if you got accepted into our program, it means that you have what it takes academically to be successful. So I encourage you to grab this opportunity with both hands and pursue it with grit. We are looking forward to supporting you in this endeavor. See you soon. Normally, when you switch your radio on, there's a big chance that you will hear this voice on Cape Talk or on 702. Recently, or not so long ago, there was also an interview that was done with the person that I will interview next on CNN. So the world have become aware of this professor. This is Professor Tinas Boysen. He's a lecturer at the Faculty of Engineering at Stellenbosch University. So we have the privilege to interview him today uh, instead of the world media getting to know what he's up to. So, Professor Boysen, Tinas, welcome and thank you very much that we can have this conversation uh, between the two of us. Hi August, thanks for the opportunity. So, let us find out what are some of the solutions to local problems that Tinas Boysen and his team of students have come up with. Now, Tinas, in 2018, we all held up our breath in Cape Town because our dams were running so low and it was on its way to the brink of day zero. Cape Town would have been the first major city in the world that ran out of water. There was a combination of drastic measures that were taken but you and your students also came up with a solution to help avert this catastrophe, potential catastrophe. Would you mind sharing some of those ideas and those solutions that you and your students came up with? Absolutely, August. Um, people always say an engineer has a problem for every solution. Um, but the truth is actually that engineers love to solve problems. And um, one thing that engineers do is continually look out for ways to improve things and to make the world a better place and make people's lives easier. And 
our project was very much focused on creating a solution there and then and using the technological background that our students have and that we have to then make that impact. But truth be told, I don't think this was an isolated case at all. Um, firstly, because I think our country has many issues and the drought was just one example of an issue that all of us had, like a common enemy. Um, in fact, we have many issues in the country and one of them is obviously poverty, exclusion, things like that. And what we as an engineering faculty believe is that we're supposed to make things better and we're supposed to invest in communities, so invest in society and basically help people in this country with technology, with engineering to improve our status. So this was just one instance of us just applying our knowledge um, in a technological way to make things better and to help avert the drought. Okay, so you then came up with the smart water meter. Tell us about that, especially the results when you um, installed this at a few schools. Okay, so the, the smart water meter works on the premise that if you can measure something, you can manage it. And um, unfortunately, water is a very scarce commodity in this country. And also, unfortunately, therefore, it's very cheap. Um, the, the tariffs on water is very low to help, help everybody afford it. But the flip side of that coin is that people don't appreciate it sufficiently. So we use these smart, meter water, smart water meters to measure consumption at the schools and then use that consumption to drive down behavior and to inform us on when to when and where to um, perform maintenance. So just very simply, um, we brought down uh, one of the schools, for example, that we, we've, was Hector Peterson Primary. We brought down the usage from about 50 kiloliters a day to in the order of six kiloliters a day on average. And this was purely just by knowing and measuring. And this wasn't rocket science. This was just applying very simple engineering methodologies and engineering technologies to make people aware. So a lot of what we're trying to do, at least in my group, is to make people aware of what they're doing, aware of their impact on society, aware of their impact on um, the road system, aware of their impact on the environment, etc. Excellent. Now, Tinas, what was so special about this project is the fact that you've involved commercial partners. You've also involved local government and national government mm -hmm. partners, and you've involved the media. Um, is this something common happening at the Faculty of Engineering? Yeah, that's something that I've found fascinating about Stellenbosch University. Our faculty is very much rooted in our collaboration with industry and government. And again, this speaks to an engineering's uh, need to make a difference in the world. And the only way for us to ensure that what we do is relevant to the country, to industry, to the needs, is to collaborate with industry. So Stellenbosch University, especially in the engineering faculty, has very strong ties with industry. So uh, a substantial amount of our funding actually comes from industry because industry can see the value in what we're doing. We prefer it because then we know that what we do is relevant. And then it also provides a channel for our students to find work easily, quickly, and work that they enjoy to do, work that really gives them um, the excitement and that drives them um, what they have a passion for. Um, in addition, working with government is very important because then we know that we can also inform policy. And as you know, uh, the resources in this country are, are limited. So if we can make intelligent choices in industry, uh, uh, rather in government, then we will save money and perform better. So a lot of what we do is also with government in mind and in collaboration with them. And then finally, the media is just a very nice way to get the message out there and the way to reach people. Oh, excellent, excellent. Now, Tinas, just to think that this project um, started in the Western Cape in a few schools, uh, but of course there's probably future plans. Would you mind sharing some of the future plans with us? Yeah, absolutely. So this project has grown. Initially, we, um, we supported 350 odd schools uh, through support from the Western Cape Education Department and ShopRite and um, all the, the corporate funders. I think we were about 100. But what has happened now is we're in talks with the Western Cape Education Department to roll it out to all 1,700 schools. Um, they're actually sponsoring the project. And then also we're in talks with the Basic Education Department. But what has also happened is 
um, because the university has an ethos of investing in society and uh, applying social mobility and helping people really help themselves, uh, our social impact division has given us funds to also help schools with their electricity bills and to reduce their electricity costs because this is a substantial burden, especially on the poorer schools. So we've gone into 25 schools, revamped the electricity system, replaced the lights and also used smart meter data to drive behavior change. And that is now also being ramped up to other schools. And we're also helping with um, solar powering of some of these schools, also in discussion with the national government again, just to ensure the relevance of what we're doing and the longevity of having this impact. Well, that is excellent. That is what South Africa needs. But it's good that you're starting in schools because from the school, the message can be brought back to homes. And, and so the mindsets of communities can also be, be influenced that way. Um, it's good to hear there's a, there's a solution to the problem that we have with water, but also electricity. You know, the usage that is ex expensive and, and schools can now afford to use that funds or the money on other important projects and so on. Now, Tina's as a lecturer, and also a researcher, you have seen many students, you taught many students over the years. Where are some of these students today? Uh, what companies are they typically working after graduating as engineers? That's a good question. So August, I th I've seen around 15,000 students pass under my hands in the last few years, um, which is substantial. But my background is obviously electrical engineering, so I've seen more of those. But um, some of the companies that come to mind is uh, one of my students uh, works at Amazon. We have senior executives in Amazon, especially here in Cape Town. Uh, Google Mind, some of the researchers there are from our department, but it's very much not limited to engineering typical fields. So as you can hear, it's software, but also we've got guys in FinTech. So we've got people in FNB. We have people working for Deloitte as consultants. Um, I also have some students working at Tesla, and then we have students across the world. So we have students working at universities in Germany, universities in Denmark. Um, so all the big companies will have some people from our background. And what you will find is that what we bring to the party, our competitive edge almost as engineering uh, graduates, is that we apply critical thinking, critical analysis and problem solving. So those skills are transferable to almost any field and any big company in the world will gladly take on an engineering student. Excellent. Tinas, thank you very much for this conversation. We certainly uh, hope and we know that many of the great 12s out there will now think they also want to make a difference, not only globally, but also locally. And engineering will certainly empower you as a prospective engineering student to think long term. So we're looking forward to welcome you as one of our students in 2022. Talking about a rewarding career, the next person that you will listen to, his name is Kristen Nichols. Kristen Nichols will share his journey of being an engineering student, but also as an engineer and how he have found this to be a rewarding career. So tune in for Chris to Nichols. We also want you to watch this video uh, right at the end of this conversation so that you can see how engineers have make an, made an impact on the lives of young students in Kailicha. So watch this video, please. My name is Liso Nokon. I am 12 years old. I am in grade seven at Yomelela Public Primary School. In my class, they call me mastermind because I love to do experiments. I love to go to the library. I read almost all the books. When I grow up, I want to be a doctor or a scientist. My mom told me that we must look after the environment. I love environment and nature. Every day I try to make my environment a better place. I live in Kailich in Cape Town. My mom is very strict to us to save water. I try my best to help save water. When I'm finished to bath, I save that water so that I can flush the toilet with that water. 
when I first heard about Day Zero, it made me scared. Imagine the whole of Cape Town are running out of water. I don't know where to start with fixing the problem. One day I was walking to school and I saw the principal and some people at our water system. I was worried because I thought it was day zero. But then I found out it was ShopRite putting water monitor so that we can check our usage and save water. When we came across this smart water meter, it made sense for us to put our resources behind it to help all communities to save water. We designed a device that can, gets connected to the mains. It reads the water flow, and then that gets sent to an online database, and we process that and make it available for users to see in real time. Our science teacher also helped us to check on internet how much water do we use. We were very shocked to find that at night, when there should be no flow, there were very high usages. The biggest problem was urinals and toilets that were flushing. After we fixed the valves, we noticed that there is a big difference in terms of the amount that we were using. So after two months of the intervention, the school was able to save just over 4 million litres of water. That's just over 300,000 rands. It's a quarter of their yearly budget. Unbelievable. There was no way for us to pay that amount. We will probably be facing the water cuts. We are very much grateful to ShopRite for supporting our schools. The smart water meter helped us to save millions of millions of water. ShopRite is helping our school a lot. That large amount that we have saved, we will use for maths and science extra classes. Well, I hope we get a soccer field. Hi there, my name is Christo Nichols and welcome to a presentation that I entitled My Rewarding Career as an Engineer, A Trip Around the World. So let's peruse the journey that I'll take you on through this presentation. First and foremost, I will disclose my reason why I chose Stellenbosch University as my preferred institution of qualification obtaining. Secondly, I will then explore with you some of the exploits I was able to undergo post obtaining of my degree. So let's do a deep dive into my why. The reason why I chose Stellenbosch University is effectively twofold. I had two needs. The first need I had was a need for an equal chance. The second need I had was the need to see the world. Let me provide some context to why these particular needs were the reason behind me choosing Stellenbosch. I had the need for an equal chance to experience a healthy and safe environment. Because as a young colored boy growing up on the Cape Flats of Cape Town, from Bridgetown through Nova Park to East River and Blue Downs, my reality was that I had a 50% chance of making my 21st birthday. That was my reality. I needed a chance to find myself in an environment where the odds were a bit better to experience a different type and quality of life. I had a need for an equal chance to e explore and discover who Crystal Nichols was. As my mom died at the age of 13, in those days it was known as Standard 6, today it's known as Grade 8. And on the 4th of September 1991, my life was catapulted from a young teenager to the primary caretaker of my one-year-old sister 
an eight-year-old brother, purely due to the constraints associated with my dad's um, work setup. Hence the need for an equal chance to have one moment where I can discover who Christo Nichols is, but most importantly, what Christo Nichols has to offer for the world out there. And then thirdly, I had a need for an equal chance of quality education. I went to a school called Malibu Secondary or Malibu High in Blue Downs. At the school, we had phenomenal teachers with noble intent to give the best to their students, but categorically stated, I was exposed to a marginalized education. Let me quantify and justify that statement. When I sat in my first year at university, I was shocked to see the eloquency that my fellow students were able to dialogue in parallel with lecturers when we had subjects like engineering drawings, when we had subjects like computer programming, for the simple reason those were subjects they had at school, they had technical drawings, they had computer programming. At my school, we didn't even have computers and definitely we couldn't attract teachers to come and teach on the Cape Flats, these type of subjects. I had a need for an equal chance to quality education. I had a need to see the world why. I love the following. I love good food, in particular good coffee. I love experiencing, connecting with people through sport and music. And I love exploring how technology-based solutions can enhance the lives of society. And all of the above needs, I, based on my research concluded, Stellenbosch University has the potential of meeting. Now let me take you on an exploration of the exploits that I was able to undergo, just some of them, post the point of um, successfully completing my degree at Stellenbosch University's Faculty of Engineering. I arrived in 1996 on a Sunday with a metro rail train at Stellenbosch that departed from East River Station and arrived at Stellenbosch Station. Reason being was very simple. My dad's car was broken and within our family there was no one that we could leverage on who, who had a vehicle to at least drop me at my residence in Stellenbosch. But lo and behold, post the point where I graduated, a metro rail train stopped becoming my default means of transportation. Because I flew business class to Asia whilst working for Visa. And what was interesting when I arrived in Asia, I was able to taste the beautiful spiced tea that India offered to me on the streets of Pune. I was able to experience connecting with my Indian and brothers and sisters through an interesting collaboration of Western versus Indian music that we formed. And I was able to explore how technology can actually make those living on the fringes of society part of mainstream economics. Because I was employed by Visa at that time as the program manager to roll out the first nationwide mobile wallet solution that allowed those who migrated to the cities to share their wealth through our mobile wallet um, financial platform to those still stuck on the outskirts of society. In UK and Europe, I was able to taste what it feels like to have lunch eating a freshly baked croissant and creme brulee on the grass behind the Eiffel Tower. I was able to experience how to connect with my friends' brothers at an open night in the south of France in Poitiers, Chesnoy, where I jammed with them an old classic by Ben E. King called Stand By Me. But most importantly, I was able to explore how I can leverage on technology to assist local government to bolster their mandate of providing guaranteed and sustainable services. 
In the United States of America, for the first time I tasted deer on a tour that I did of the Rocky Mountains. Again, I was able to connect with my USA American brothers through old classic blues of of B.B. King and the likes. But again, most importantly, I was exposed to how to use technology to make sure that the environment that society finds them in is safe by having a deep dive session with the first responders from Arlington that responded to the 2001 9-11 terrorist attacks because I was sent over as the counter-terrorism specialist of South Africa to formulate a framework for the 2010 World Cup. Then lastly in South America, Brazil, I was fortunate to taste the most beautiful rounded pilau coffee at the feet of the Corcovado or Christ um, statue overlooking the pristine beaches of Botafogo, Ipanema and Copacabana. And I had the privilege of connecting with my Brazilian brothers by joining them watching a game at the Maracanã Stadium that can host 275,000 people watching a football game, one of the most life-changing experiences. But most importantly, again, I was able to explore how to use technology and bring about dignity to those that we have deemed the outcast of society. Those ones living in informal settlements because through technology, we provided to them an identity. We provided to them through that identity subsequently, the dignity of now approaching a bank, although they're staying in an informal settlement called the favela because I was positioned there for three years to develop, approve, deploy a solution to 600,000 um, consumers within the Cantagallo favela in Rio de Janeiro, the same favela where one of the Fast and Furious movies was shot subsequent to my visit, with a simple intent, that those individuals can be seamlessly integrated into mainstream society to do the mundane things of arranging something as simple as a bursary or a loan for their child. So in all honesty, I can conclude with the following. The Stellenbosch engineering course is indeed an opportunity to discover the best version of you despite the handicap that you arrive at the gate with of the Faculty of Engineering. Because there are two things that the faculty offers. After we've accepted you into our faculty, we ask of you, accept that you are indeed the best of the best that we could choose. And be convinced that you are capable of completing this degree. But what we also offer is assistance on your journey towards qualification. And then lastly, this engineering course at Stellenbosch is indeed an opportunity to become a world leader in your domain. Because how other can you explain how a simple colored boy from the Cape Flats rubbed shoulders with the brightest minds of Cambridge around the table, not as this, um, as their reportee or, sub, or reporting to them, but as, as the equal peer because together we developed a solution based on RF technology that enhanced the experience of utility service provision over the last decade already. So how else would you explain that a colored boy from the Cape Flats obtained an education that offered him the opportunity to rub shoulders with the brightest minds that this planet has to offer from the University of Cambridge? to develop a bespoke RF-based solution that enhanced the service delivery of utility services within the African context for the last decade already. So I truly trust that you will seriously consider Stellenbosch as a potential partner that will help you achieve that goal of becoming a qualified engineer. And I earnestly hope that I will see you in the corridors of the Stellenbosch University's Faculty of Engineering when 
you eventually join the family. From my side, all of the best for the decision-making that lies ahead. Thank you so much. We're very happy to have an interview now with one of our first year students. Her name is Yusra Azakhani. Yusra is a first year civil engineering student and two weeks ago she received an, an accolade, an award from the university because of her good performance in engineering. So Yusra, welcome and thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Yusra, just Share with us, where are you from and where did you matriculate? I'm from Wilnetton in Cape Town and I matriculated from Pinelands High School. All right, that's good to hear. Now, growing up, like all little girls and boys, you also had plans, you had career options. What were some of those career options that you had? My very first dream career was to become a rock star. Wow, I would have loved to be a fly against the wall. <laughs> well, how did your parents respond to that career option? Well, I assured my parents that no matter what, I would still wear my headscarf, even as a rock star. Okay. But later on, I wanted to become a doctor, architect and veterinarian. And so from those career options, how did you land up in engineering? I decided on engineering because I wanted to make a positive impact on society while meaningfully contributing to creating a safe and sustainable environment for people. All right, so why civil engineering? I specifically chose civil engineering because of the creative ways I can apply math and physics to real life situations as well as being a keen environmentalist. Okay, excellent. Now, your school is a few kilometers from one of the top universities in the world, but you chose Stellenbosch University for engineering. Why? After attending Stellenbosch's engineering winter week, that was already my first sign that this is the place for me. But after attending both UCT and Stellenbosch's open days, it was mind-blowingly clear to me that the engineering department at Stellenbosch had more to offer me. Yeah, that's good. That's excellent to hear. Now, you saw many people say that, you know, engineering is a man's world. And that's why most students in engineering are men. What is your experience like? I think engineering is definitely no longer a male-dominated field. There is a growing and flourishing female presence in engineering classes at Stellenbosch. Ah, that's, that's good. Um, so, Growing up and being at school, being surrounded by other students that made other choices, other career choices and other institutions where they want to study, what were some of the fears, the myths around Stellenbosch University that you shared with me earlier? I think a few of my main concerns were Afrikaans, the res culture and entering a supposedly male-dominated field. Okay, and so what is your experience like now? As you've heard, you need to be fluent in Afrikaans to attend Stellenbosch University. Well, this is so far from true. In every one of my experiences, speaking to a lecturer or student, where they spoke to me in Afrikaans, I would naturally reply in English, but they would immediately and without hesitation reply or continue the conversation in English just to be accommodating. That's so good to hear. So that myth and that fear that you had that uh, you will have to speak Afrikaans, that fear disappeared yeah. uh, through interaction with your lecturers and, and uh, the students that you interacted. You should just tell us, what is your recipe for success in engineering studies? I think studying in groups really makes a big difference. I encourage all first years that if they don't plan on staying on the res, they should still study in groups because you really learn more and faster when you study with other people. That's true, hey? and especially for grade 12s uh, that uh, used to study on their own and sitting in their little corner doing things on their own at university, group work is really the thing that, that leads to success to, to students. Where do you want engineering to take you? What would you like to achieve? and do with engineering degree? I truly want engineering to enable me to help others. I want to create sustainable housing to il help eliminate the lack of proper housing in South Africa. But I specifically want to do this using 
environmentally friendly materials because there are endless possibilities of recyclable materials that can be manipulated and used to build structures. This will be cost effective as well as a green conscious option. So it aims to address the high poverty rates in South Africa as well as climate change. Excellent, excellent. And I mean, South Africa desperately needs that kind of solutions to our housing problems. So uh, we look forward to see the difference <laughs> that you will make as a civil engineer uh, in the future. Now, 2021, even 2020, was a very challenging year for all of us I mean, with COVID and, and, and so on and so forth. Now, if you look back and you think about the time when you were at school and now that you are a first year student, what would you say is the difference between a university and a school? Wow, where do I begin? I think university definitely allows you a lot more freedom and independence, but that obviously means you need to be more responsible and disciplined. When you attend university, you don't have small classes anymore or lecturers spoon feeding you the way teachers did. You are really expected to grow up and take control of your studies. Yeah, that's, that's true, eh? that's true. That's a real difference between university and school. Now Yusra, as I said in the beginning, you have achieved a lot, even in your first year, so much so that the university rewarded you two weeks ago. Now, but your life is certainly not only about studying and studying and studying. How do you balance things out? There's nothing I want to emphasize more than this. <coughs> Lead a balanced life. I play Marty's hockey while studying, no matter how many people question where I find the time for this. Because to me, an hour of hockey practice after a tiresome day of doing work makes all the difference. Okay, so sport is really uh, the way that you're balancing things out. So, yes. so that's, that's good, that's excellent. The last question for you is, there's many grade 12s that will be listening to you and some of the girls might ask, is engineering really for me? What would you say to those girls? I think if you still picture engineering as being a handyman or construction worker, then you have the wrong perception of what an engineer is. Engineers are designers, problem solvers, inventors. Women are not only capable of this, but we are capable of excelling at this. So don't let anyone limit your dreams. Believe you are smart, believe you are capable, and believe you are worthy of being here. Excellent. Yusra, thank you very much for this conversation. I'm sure that your experience as a first year student will certainly help those grade 12s to make this final decision to come and register as an engineering student at Stellenbosch University. So once again, thank you and all the best with your career. Thank you for having me and good luck to the first years with their final exams. So grade 12s, you've now heard from our Dean, our Vice Dean, You've heard from our lecturers. You've heard from our students. You know that we look forward to welcome you in the Faculty of Engineering. And so we want to wish you well with your final exams. We want to uh, ask you to please keep safe and to uh, mask up and to, to look after yourself. And we look forward to welcoming you in 2022. You will soon receive your welcoming program and many other important information from the university. Please read meticulously through that and contact us if you need any information at any stage. Thank you very much that you've uh, logged in and have a good evening.